And there we are. People can see us. We didn't know the spiel. You, they're there. Yeah. 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 Yep. yep. Uh, smell of vision and touch of vision have been deactivated. That's on the Patreon site for uh-huh. uh, defenders of Cobalt. We, Mine was disallowed by the federal government due to COVID regulations yeah, in my, yeah, in my yeah, household. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want to smell like... this. You don't want to smell this. Mm. Couldn't even, I couldn't even smell it for days. <laughs> There we go. So we're back uh, with our Shadow Run. This time using an actual Shadow Run uh, role playing system, Shadow Run Anarchy, which I will fully admit uh, up front here that I have not had a lot of time to go over the rule system. So there will be some looking up, uh, downright doing it wrong, and uh, pausing as we play. But tonight uh, we have a slightly abbreviated crew. Uh, why don't you? Plug anything you want to plug and tell us who you're playing. Chuck, we'll start with you. Yeah, Defenders of Cobalt, twitch.tv slash Defenders of Cobalt. Uh, we do all sorts of stuff, all sorts of games. I also run some games over on Free League Publishing and Goodman Games Official. We got some zines out there. Uh, but tonight, I'm playing everyone's favorite little wizard, uh, Ivan. Um, yeah, we'll see what we do. Uh, yeah, that's what I got. Let's face it, Chuck. I've I've heard you play on so many streams. You play Ivan all the time. I so do. It, it's He's one of my Ivan. reoccurring ones. Yeah, Ivan. <laughs> just Ivan. Yeah, Christopher. I am the cantankerous contagion, the viral sensation, back from the edge of COVID death. And I am playing Techno G Gregorius, the Elven Techno Wiz, the uh, the Decker, um, <clears throat> who. Loves his family, but hates organics, thinks technology rules, and is super interesting to go to Ger- super interested to, to be in Germany. And when he says he hates organics, he means you, all of you. Hates yeah, me. all of you. Okay. Everyone watching. Slowly That's swapping nice. part body parts out to become a, a robot. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff. Uh, yeah, I'm Jeff. Uh, I run a little group called Adventures in Lollygagging. We play games over on twitch.tv slash the lollygaggers on uh, every other Monday, Friday, and Saturday. It's kind of our schedule at this point. And uh, like Chuck, we run a game over on Free League Publishing as well on the opposite Mondays, including tomorrow night, where you can catch both Bert and Chuck as players. Uh, we're playing Vason, so you want to check that out. Uh, I am playing Gentu Braboa, uh, a, a, a dwarven street samurai with a heart of gold and limbs of chrome. Uh, he also moonlights as a little bit of everything. Uh, I think he's a small business owner and possible venture capitalist. Something like that is kind of his future as he just collects as many friends as he possibly can. One day, I'm just going to call all of those favors in. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's him. So, he smashes things. I'm really glad that you uh, you mentioned uh, Monday there, Jeff. I had forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Let me pencil you in, man. So, uh, Bert, you're playing tomorrow night. <laughs> so you got to watch Chuck's memory gap. Night. Yeah, yeah, it's, that, it's that's that old age. I wasn't uh, even yeah. sure what day it was when I woke yeah. up today. The, the white in this beard is not cosplaying, man. It's <laughs> <laughs> you didn't just spill flour. All homegrown. No, did, did not no. It's honest. It's honestly earned. Um, I'm Bert. I'm the host and primary GM for the podcast of Steam, Steel, and Murder. And uh, more and more, I'm doing these Twitch things. Uh, soon to have a channel of my own. So let's uh, let's get into it then. Uh, last time we played, you guys accepted a, a new commission. Uh, not just for the cash, but also for the opportunity to get out of a uh, city that's become very hot for you, as mm-hmm. you have been informed that someone has been paying good cred to get a hold of, uh, well, any one of you in your party for questioning. They have questions. So, uh, what do you remember from that? <laughs> Chuck, any highlights? Anything that uh, your character was stewing around? Yeah, well, afterwards. we, of course, there was a hit on me, uh, a failed hit. In fact, all of our hits were failed hits. They were almost like warning shots. I kind of get the vibe of. So we went to, and for the life of me, I need to find my other notebook. I don't remember the guy's name. Uh, Morlock. Morlock. Morlock, yeah. Mm-hmm. Our previous con, uh, Johnson. 
And he's just like, yeah, people are paying big dollar bills for you to, to show catch up. one of us, yeah. wasn't it? To, to catch him alive, us. too. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and so, yeah, he said, hey, I got this cool job that you can do in the meantime. Uh, but it is going to, you know, take you to Germany uh, and uh, give us time to lay low. It's a little sketchy because they did give us a suitcase, which ended up being full of ears that we collected. Yeah. yeah. Um, so nothing like crossing international borders with body parts of people. Oh, you won't be. Uh, remember, the suitcase was just left out uh, as he turned his back, if oh, you were interested right. in opening it. And it's going to precede you there. It's okay. going to be shipped on its own. We just do the like the couriering once it's there. Yeah. yeah. Correct. We're headed to Schloss Moosmausen. Yeah. Germany. I just German wrote Baron Chalet. That's all. That's how I remember it. Moos Moosmausen. Yeah. Descended yeah. from some historical noble family of trolls. Thinks he is at least. Thinks yeah. he is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. and it it fits into that uh, kind of like that elven stuff mm -hmm. we came across previously, where it's these groups uh these emerged groups are saying that they've existed way longer uh so yeah it's tying together real weird i'm not quite sure what to make of it but i am fairly confident we're getting set up in some way sure yes because yeah. we're looking for a book again i know that's what i wrote yeah. i'm like like <laughs> history Retrieve book? a history question book. mark <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that's what it looks like <laughs> yep. Yeah. yep so i think it was that the the baron believes there was another time where like metahumans lived on earth or something like that and this book uh could potentially provide proof uh, right and uh and that and also somehow his connection to whatever you know those metahumans and like his family somehow has connection to like the powers that be from that time something like that mm -hmm. and they also he might be mad uh, and that he he gives scheduled tours of his castle. Yeah. But he recently like hasn't really been spending money, and I think he has like the nickname Mad. So I, I don't know something like that. Yeah, yeah the sense. Mad Baron. Yeah, somebody did some uh, <clears throat> legwork and found out that this guy used to be a jet sitter, big money spender. He would uh, you know take jet uh, jet rides all over the place, throwing mad money around, uh, but has recently become a recluse. Uh, he he had already undergone the transformation, so like he was a troll the whole time that he was like a jet setting playboy. So it's mm. not that that changed his attitude. Yeah. yeah. We're getting paid forty k a piece, ten k up front. You get a month's stay in a chalet, I think in Bavaria, and mm. then Mister uh, and then Morlock was willing to give us an extra eighty k if we gave him like an after action report or something like that. Because yeah. he's kind of curious about what's going down too. That sounds right. Yeah. 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 Very good. So in the meantime, uh, until you catch your suborbital tomorrow, uh, you're kind of laying low in the uh, penthouse suite across from Mr. Morlock. He's got basically this entire floor. There's, so there's like the guest rooms across from him that you guys are staying in. He did warn you that um, being a suborbital, you guys are going to go through some heavy security to get on board that thing. And so he advises you, you know, be cool about what you bring. Um, nothing illegal and uh, he gave you contact information for someone on the other side to get you guys armed up and kitted out mm. i think we agreed to just leave the grenades at home yeah That's yeah the grenades were staying <laughs> begrudgingly yeah begrudgingly because i've uh, named all of them so. i'm i'm betting none of your characters has previously flown generally people don't migrate very far outside of their burrows and shadow run uh, unless you're a corp um well, let, let's go ahead and say that uh, technology, you did just a little bit of research on what's considered legal, illegal, etc. Handguns up to a certain size are legal, but they're checked into baggage and you and they need to be registered. So if you've got a fake SIN, but that fake SIN actually has a registered firearm, then it's legal. Assuming they don't notice that your SIN is fake. <laughs> yeah, I should get one of them. <laughs> right. Um, more importantly for Gantu, this particular airport that you're going to be leaving from tomorrow um, has a really good security scanner. Uh, they're called the Gateway Systems, which can detect cyberware and cyber weaponry. 
um, which isn't necessarily banned. Like if you have a cyber gun in your leg or arm, but it's not loaded, it has no ammo in it. Mm -hmm. That's, that's allowable, but they will put a restraining bracelet on you. Probably gone to will, uh, or techno G will show you the video where it's a lockout system. It's a little bracelet. And if you try to use cyberware that is considered weaponry, they show the little, you know, it's like the stick figure man with an icon and they show his arm getting blown off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, definitely my gun's got the shotgun built into it. So uh, mm. my leg does. But like, I don't know. I, I mean, my arm is, I, I could just say it's it's for construction work. I mean, that's all it's for. Uh, yeah, the a, a heightened strength and all that is yeah. perfectly fine. But concealed weaponry um, is, it, it's basically safety tagged this way. Okay. I mean, I, I'll, I'll keep I'll, I'll keep the ammo out and everything. And mm. I, I, I won't try to sneak anything. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so like if your 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 gun is not loaded, yeah. Um, and you're not checking in uh, the bullets, you know, they'll still lock it just in case. Sure. Uh, but, you know, it's fine. They're not going to take your leg away from you <laughs> before you're yeah. bored. It'd be very awkward. I apparently bought a gun. <laughs> I have an Ares yeah. Predator 6 now. So uh, this suborbital is, uh, it's, it's basically, there's, there's no first and second <laughs> class. It's, all, it's first class all the way. <laughs> Uh, so this is going to be a pretty pretty nice ride for those of you who've never ridden first class or flown before. The We're all first class. Part. Look at us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your mage may know a little bit about this. Uh, at least he would have been taught in school. Ivan may have been sick that day, but uh, <laughs> once you leave uh, Earth orbit, spell casting gets gets really it's weird. Wonky, yeah. It's really weird. <laughs> So it, it's usually advisable not to go astral one, um, and spirit summoning is also something you probably shouldn't do. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, yeah. What kind of spirits would you get out there? That would be cool. <laughs> I just let's do summon that. See the if you can sun find a space accidentally. Whale. Ooh, space that would whale be cool. or something. <laughs> I'd be all right with that. Tentacular no, wars from space beyond the run. void. <laughs> I accidentally summoned dog Sathoth. Hmm. <laughs> Bill, the cosmic horror from beyond who really wants snickerdoodles right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell you, if we had dogs at the, this job would be a lot easier. Yeah. It sure would. Sniff these elf ears. Fetch. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've got the rest of the night to enjoy uh, Mr. Morlock's uh, amenities. Uh, again, it's really nice digs uh, softest bed you probably ever slept on his uh, liquor cabinet is fully stocked of just tremendously nice things and of course the uh, the now ubiquitous real coffee that's everywhere <laughs> you know for something that's so rare you run into it an awful lot because you know everyone likes coffee yeah <laughs> we know how to get around um you have net access uh he says it's well protected and if you want to you know, probe that a little bit techno. It, it, it quite, it very much is. I think that's how I started digging up some stuff on Baron uh, Mooch Mausen, mm -hmm. uh, like right at the end of the last game where we started digging around. Because he, <clears throat> if I recall, I think Falk was stuffing his pockets full of food or something from from Morlock's stores. Mm -hmm. That sounds like, right. hey, there's, there's food on the plane, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Falk is still recovering from knocking himself out so frequently when he spell casts, so he's he's snoozing right now. We got him. We got him a coffin, and we're gonna we're gonna send him in cargo. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Brendan will be joining us again. He's just uh, had some work he had to attend to tonight. So if you're not, <laughs> he will be back around. So guys, right. um, your flight isn't until uh, the later part of the afternoon tomorrow. Um, you are advised to lay low, but is there anything else you want to do uh, to prepare? Let's fake our deaths. That's intense. Always good. <laughs> that's intense. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, let's throw people off the scent for a while. Yeah. I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Techno G has the big ideas, remember. I feel like <laughs> one thing Ganto would, pro Ganto would probably do is just sort of let the low ballers know, you know, that. Yeah, just keep an eye out because I know they're not specifically runners themselves, so they might not already know this. But like, I would just give them kind of a, a heads up uh, in case uh, anyone comes asking about me or uh, uh, or or anything even pushier than that. So I'd probably give them a. a yeah. So they're all hanging out at uh, 
<laughs> who's been affectionately termed Twitchy's house, <clears throat> watching a few games, and you say this, and you hear him, you hear him say, "I hear that," and uh, you start hearing the sound of like uh, reinforced steel <laughs> shields <laughs> dropping into place around his house. <laughs> <laughs> that Twitchy, <laughs> that's my boy right there. there you go. <laughs> No, he's, he's a little paranoid, but yeah, too. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You're a good buddy, and you ball pretty damn well, but you're into some squirrely stuff. Listen, man, you gotta you gotta do things to make coin these days. You know, no, don't judge. You know, it is what it is. There's a pause for a moment as he's muttering to himself, "Oh, the things I've done." I mean, the twenties <laughs> a twenty. Shit. Okay, you're, you're you're past those things now, man. You're past those things. Just keep your eyes forward and. Keep moving. Don't look behind. <laughs> what about my behind? What did you hear? Uh, hey, I heard, it, heard a 20 is <laughs> a 20. That it's toned in, in the proper proportions to your body. Crush a bowling ball with it. <laughs> there you go. It's good to pay for them Yelp reviews now and then. Uh, <laughs> All right. No, no seriously, yeah. you you do hear the sound of like uh, okay. like steel barriers <laughs> yeah. coming down. It's like, right. Yeah, but that's definitely yeah. That would definitely be something. I would oh, we won the game, by the way. They awarded us uh, they awarded us the honors after the other team was uh, well, half killed. They they couldn't finish. So uh, after you left, we finished nice. up. One of these days, we're going to finish a tournament without everyone having to die in the uh, in the bowling alley, so I can have the celebratory cake. Maybe well, die. it'd be nice to get a non bloodstained trophy now and then too. I know. I'd rather have a bloodstained trophy than no trophy at all. But still, you know. You are okay. correct, sir. Yeah. You know, hey, I do I do have a cleaning enterprise now, so perhaps we can find some chemicals to clean the blood out. That should be all right. Uh, you hear the cocking of several weapons. Right. We'll see you when you get back. Okay. You guys don't have too much fun now. <laughs> Wait, what'd you hear? Click. <laughs> <laughs> Twitchy, Twitchy's really coming into his own. Did we say we were going to pick up a vehicle in Germany or? Did well, he offered to ship your van. Um, That's what I thought. It would be thought cool, it but it's also geared for the wrong side of the road driving. Uh, but yeah, you Germany, it's not. Well, it is now. <laughs> but uh, yeah, why you do can I get have one on a, the other end. Why do I have a British van in Seattle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, that's fine. Man. Yeah, either way. I, I go and like hug the SUV. I'm like, don't blow up while we're gone. I put so much time into you. I'm just well, I can keep almost her. afford the cam the the uh holographic camouflage armor. <laughs> so you can throw up all those uh orc uh graffiti yeah, whenever you want. Just change it to whatever I need. There you go. He'll keep your van uh in his private parking area. Uh, I mean there's armed guards all the time, so should be safe. I, I look at Morlock and I'm like, uh, you send someone down to talk to her every once in a while? She's sensitive <laughs> uh, that way. Right. She's like, hey, how's it going? Check the air pressure on the you know, on the solid tires. We'll put stuff. David on that. David likes to talk to things. Perfect. David sounds perfectly suited for the job. Oh, I got to name the SUV. David was one of those family hires, you know. His brother was working for me. <laughs> <laughs> Move my sister a favor. <laughs> uh, is there anything else you want to try and do beforehand? Um, you did legwork already on um, Mooch Mouse, and uh, that was done. Um, but that's pretty much it. Is there anything else that you wanted to look up? A, a note to the other players. This is always where I feel like we're missing something, and Bert is trying to <laughs> clue us into it, to it. Like, are you sure you don't want to do one more thing before you leave? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> are you sure you want to go left? Is it left you want to go? It's really always left. left. It's always we've left. Got, we've gotten rid of like all of our stuff that could give us trouble on the trip. We, I, you know, anybody we're close to or we work with here, we've notified to keep their heads down for a bit. We did our as much, I think, as much research as we could on. On the, did we look up like the the Baron and stuff? We like we did research on the Baron. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I don't know. I feel like we've yeah. dotted our eyes. And once we get there, we can always do more research. So I'm not. I have a and I have a contact pending too. I would. I never came up with a final mm -hmm. contact. So. Oh, uh, reminds me as well. Um, since I didn't realize this was a thing in the new edition, when you negotiated for uh, your pay on this, you guys earned two street cred each. 
Oh. Ooh. That's cool. <clears throat> you got a place for that? And uh, just for other things you could do, like if you ever sell that pay data that you have, that's worth a D6 street cred uh, per file. Uh, cool. And there's there's a lot of files. <laughs> nice. There's a lot of files in there. Is there a place on the sheet for street cred? You know, I don't I know. You might just need to to note it in the notes area. Okay, um, the things you can do with street cred are like hire freelancers to do things for you. Um, Put up and maintain the lifestyle better than your normal. Purchase uh, consumable uh, goods uh, that you know that have a uh, street value that make them illegal, that sort okay. of thing. So I guess the two things that I would probably do is first ask Techno G to register my revolver to my fake sin, because I'm sure it's still probably registered to the person I stole it from or whoever they stole it from, <laughs> so on and so forth. Uh, the other thing I would do is I would call my, my fence uh, Victor, uh, and I would probably tell Victor, you know, like the heat's heat's been pretty intense. So uh, I'm going to be heading down to Cali for a couple of weeks to catch some sun. All right. Sounds good. Yeah, I would just have all my drones and all my gear packed up. <clears throat> um, uh, like the, the control rig and Cyberdeck would go with me. All the programs would go with me. Just the the drones and the control rig will get packed for for flight, I guess. And I'll register his gun to his sin. I should I should probably get a sin. Uh, Morlock said he'd get me a sin for this this trip, didn't he? Right. Yeah. If you don't have any, <clears throat> Morlock did say he would get you uh, some registered sins that would pass any scrutiny that you would likely come across. So if anyone would rather use that instead, like Chuck. Yeah, if that's a good would. idea. Yeah. Yeah, it is a good idea. There we go. I'll go ahead and do that. Right. And just if you could register my gun mm. to that set. Mm. Oh, there it is. Yep. Okay. Uh, give me a hacking and logic test. Yep. Is, uh, street. You said two street cred, right? Street cred. Mm. Yeah, you got two street cred. A uh, hacking and logic. Hacking and logic. So I can just hit this. No, this. Did that do it? Six <laughs> from hacking. Yes, Holy six successes. That's a lot of successes. Holy shit. Nice. It was all fours and three sixes. Yeah, COVID is back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so only one success. So, yeah, you're actually able to hack into the. Uh, <clears throat> the state's database, uh, scrub the original ownership of that gun and link it over. Um, I mean, it'll stand up through any cursory looking at, but if like, uh, if one of those uh, alphabet soup <laughs> agencies wants to really start digging through, they'll be able to tell that it was just added recently and that the gun has a history before that, but it'll stand up to most scrutiny. Okay. Yeah. Don't shoot a fed with it. <laughs> I'll see. I'll see what don't I can do. Don't cause any federal crimes with this and we'll be all right. <laughs> I'll definitely take one of the sins Morlock uh, offers because I don't have one at all. <laughs> so what yeah, are the names on your uh, sins? Uh, what names are you going under? Oh, man. Um, I'm going to go with... Uh, oh, I need a good one. I got, I got mine. I got, I got mine, I think. All right, what's yours? Go ahead, Chris. Uh, hold on, I gotta get the whole thing. Okay, mine is, uh, I got mine. Mine is gonna be Simon Garfunkel. <laughs> All right. Oh, well, what is Simon Garfunkel's uh, career? What does he do for a living? He's a thespian, actor, entertainer. Uh, Some of the bluest movies you'll ever see. Charles <laughs> Philip Arthur George Windsor. Arthur George Windsor. <laughs> Charles Philip Arthur George Windsor. Uh, I'm just going to 
totally steal Gantu's idea, and I'm gonna go with uh, Paul Art. <laughs> All right. Well, what's Paul Art's uh, profession that's on register? Oh God. Um, uh, we're gonna go with a uh, bespoke. Um, I don't know, bespoke coffee right, mug maker. salesman. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, coffee mug seller. Okay. All right, nice. And what is uh, Arthur George Windsor's? I'm sorry, what was the, what's before the Arthur part? Philip Charles, Arthur George Windsor. <laughs> Philip Charles. Charles. So what does he do for a living? Oh, he is a um, electronic home security system consultant for the rich and famous because he's nobility. So what you're saying is you put in those security systems that leak private photos every now and then to the uh, paparazzi. That's uh, that's really what you do for a living. Right, right. Double dipping. <laughs> yes. So all of your backgrounds are your your background identity identities make enough income to make that. You know, you basically you're you're moderate. You know, middle to moderate area uh, where you could afford to go on vacation for a month or two every year. So you're not incredibly affluent, but you're not like uh, you're not the plebes either. <laughs> I feel like I'm a like I'm a commercial actor. Like I, I'm not in. Oh you know, yeah. no, I do like you're a like, commercial. You're a hand model. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> hand singular. Glad it's not just a foot one. model. Just one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot yeah. of this in your yeah. uh, repertoire. <laughs> Gantu's definitely the before of the picture. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. So those are those are your identifications. Uh, in the morning, and it, assuming you guys aren't doing anything else in the morning, uh, there's a fresh set of uh, new luggage uh, that's brought into your rooms with uh, basically clothing the tourists would be wearing. You know, it's seasonable. Uh, you're going to be heading into not quite their winter. Uh, so the clothes are, um, you know, they're comfortable. Uh, they're on the warm side, but you've also got evening wear in there as well because at your income level, you know, you would you'd definitely be able to go to black tie affairs. So you each have a nice suit in there as well. Um, specialty garb <laughs> that you might need, uh, you can pick up on the other end. So going through your luggage there, there was nothing that would bring up suspicion here all right mm -hmm. all right so if you have nothing else uh, you guys uh, have really good breakfast you just enjoy the entertainments and uh <laughs> the massage chairs and everything else that he has <laughs> the uh the ultra rich can afford um that afternoon you head off to the station uh, where security check does take a good hour and a half um is anyone trying to sneak anything aboard so chuck um yeah or paul art we'll say uh -huh. uh, has a registered firearm which you will ha you'll have to check in yep. and is going to be brought in as stored baggage so you won't have it on your person during the flight yep. but it, you can you can do it and on the other end you'll be giving yeah. it back to you so they check that in Scans through just fine. Uh, no problems with that at all. Is, is anyone trying to sneak a weapon of any sort aboard? No. I'm nope. not. Nope. Packed it all in. in carry on. Not carry on. Uh, checked luggage. Okay. Uh, Simon, <clears throat> they uh, they do note on the scanners that you do have a shotgun in integrated into your leg. And while you have no, no uh, ammo in it, they do give you one of the locking bracelets and they do make you watch this little 60 second video where the guy gets his bl arm blown off when he tries to activate his cyberware. <laughs> mm -hmm. Is it uh, is it a recreation or is it like like an actual? <laughs> no, no. It's actually the stick figure, you know, stick figure guy. Oh, okay. uh, <laughs> it I shows will... that. Yeah. At first, it's it's high electric warning shocks first, but then oh. if you really are intent in activating your cyberware, it just blows his arm off. I will tell the TSA agent that uh, that if they ever want to do a proper reenactment of this, as opposed to stick figure anim <laughs> animation, that Simon Garfunkel is available for hire. It's wonderful. This I'm always good. looking for jobs. <laughs> of course, you got to hustle, man. 
Yep. Uh, and it is put on your meat arm, by the way. It's, it's put on your good arm. Fair oh, enough. wow. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, other than that, you are checked in. A little pre-flight check. So they are... It's an aisle down the middle, and there are two seats on each side of the aisle. So two seats on the left, two seats on the right. And as I said, this is all first class. There's no intermediate class. Um, It looks like there's about 40 other passengers, which is half capacity of what this thing can do. And when you notice the the chairs, the chairs are all, they're ballistic acceleration couches. They've got that gel and everything. So when the G-forces hit, you're kind of absorbed into it. And the harness is like a racing car driver harness. There are so many points of connections on it. <laughs> and they've got videos and manuals. And there's a few stewardesses going around making sure everyone knows how to use the harnesses. It too right. will look proper terrified this whole time. <laughs> um, you have some time uh, to check out the other passengers as they're boarding. Uh, there's a few that stand out. And uh, so I'm going to use these little cards down here for, or at least I might anyway. So there's a short woman of uh, Asian descent, and she's dressed all in furs, like animal furs. And the furs are all white and gray. And you hear her talking on her uh, pan device before she sits down and straps in. She speaks flawless English, even though she has this very oriental uh, cast about her. Uh, three elderly Japanese uh, businessmen. Uh, get on board. Uh, they've, you know, they they look like your, you know, call them salary men, right? So they look. You know, that's. Um, there's a green-haired, really spastic-looking young woman um, that uh, is, the hair is like really frazzled. Her eyes are like maybe like she's never flown before. Um, I said young, didn't I? She's middle-aged. <clears throat> there is a green-haired uh, young woman who appears to be singing. Uh, quite loudly, but you don't hear anything. Technology, you do realize that she is wearing basically a vocal dap- dampener, so you can't, it, you know, her voice only projects a couple of inches from her. Um, if anyone would like me, uh, would like to go ahead and make a perception check here to see if there's anything odd about your fellow passengers. Sure. I hear what yeah. perception is real quick. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Oh, you want to do it, Chuck? Or do you want to... It's the eye icon in yeah. skills. Yeah, yeah, under skills. Oh, I yeah, I'll give it a go. Okay. One, I'm wondering. Six, six. I'm, I'm trying to figure out which one of the green-haired women I'm going to say wants to go have a drink with me. <laughs> By the way, that that Has vocal dampener and... thing is brilliant, and I hope someone truly invents that for flights because that would make it so much <laughs> yeah. more enjoyable sometimes. Yeah, strap that to all your children. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, one. <laughs> <All right>. Chuck. <laughs> okay, the only thing that, um, and it's not really odd, but the only thing that you notice is that one of the Japanese elderly salarymen um, has a uh, a metal link on one hand and a chain uh, that goes down to the suitcase that he's carrying, a briefcase that he's carrying. So he appears to be a courier of some sort. Uh, and, and he's trying to hide it pretty well. Like you can't, the dangling of the chain and everything is very subtle. You just happen to catch it. It's, he's turning a corner too fast and the chain swings a little bit outside of his cuff. I smell pay data. <laughs> <laughs> uh, otherwise, all the other passengers, and again, there are about 40 people. And these are just the ones that kind of stand out because they're either way vanilla uh, in in the Japanese salarymen in this case, or they're really oddly dressed, uh, like the uh, short Asian woman that's got all the furs on. Like in there, I mean, everything, her pants, her skirt, everything's made of fur, uh, and all in a white and gray coloration. That's gonna uh, be boarding there. last is uh, this, uh, this elderly woman, and she's uh, leading a small child. The child looks really bashful. He's looking down at his feet. He's... Um, Try not to look to either side of him, and you notice that he's got the uh, the little buds in his in his teeth coming out. It looks like he has just recently undergone the transformation. He's an orc. Um, his skin is just you know slightly lumpy, and he looks really self conscious about himself. He's got a cap on. He's trying to keep people from looking at him, and the woman is just uh, you know just giving him a little bit of soothing speech as he's walking down. But one of the passengers kind of points at the kid. 
and says something to a couple of his companions that are seated around him. And then they just all start laughing. The kid just hunkers down a little bit more. Woman scowls at them. As, uh, oh, I'm going to break their by. chairs. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to stand up. Noted. For sure. <laughs> and I'm going to walk up to them. Listen, you little fucks. That was rude. He is going through enough. Do not judge others for how they look. Or I will cut all of your penises off and sew them onto your foreheads. The guy that pointed and his, his friends are all um, very much human. Um, the guy that is in the outside alley or outside seat, so he's the first one you, you're kind of talking at, uh, kind of looks at you. It's like, oh, what do we got here? A slant ear? I'm no elf. You're elf, right? You're no, elven. I'm human. Oh, you're human. Oh, I'm sorry, all human, yeah. It's like, it's like... What's the problem, friend? He's not like you and me. <clears throat> yes, he is not like you, because you are a piece of shit that should be flushed down toilet. He gives you this dazzling smile. Uh, you're noticing that you know he's he's dressed pretty well, um, and he uh, he pulls out an actual old fashioned business card. He's like, oh, you know, sometimes shit polishes really well. I. There's no need for any hatred amongst our kind. Uh, he hands you the card, and the, you know he's a member of a humanist poly club, and it's one of these really intense groups that are all about uh, racial cleansing, right? It's like no orcs, no trolls. You all are a plague on our society. I am you know, going to keep your card. <laughs> I am going to look up your information. And then I am going to incinerate your mother. And I'll tuck the card in my pocket and go back to my seat. He blows you a kiss as you go back. He says, be careful. Mother shoots back. I hate this so much. I'm going to kill him. All of our drinks are on these guys. If my, if my <laughs> cyber deck has anything to say about it. And their entertainment systems will not work for the whole flight. Oh, that was the other thing. The chairs all have a little entertainment plug-in system. Uh, it has a screen for those that don't have cyber eyes or visors. Um, so, like, there's in-flight entertainment that's piped through there. Ooh, uh, there's, on, there's our only going to play documentaries on the awakened <laughs> races. <laughs> or documentaries of all, like, plane crashes and all the... Oh, uh, there you go. Air there you disasters. Go. <laughs> I'll, I'll let you do that. No need to roll for that. That's, that's, <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Suck this. And thanks for the drinks. <laughs> there you go. Uh, so after a little bit, uh, and this again, the little kid, and uh, maybe it, the woman's probably too old to be his mother, maybe, but maybe a grandmother or uh, you know, something like that. After they've taken the seat, um, man comes out of the cabin and he says, uh, this is Luflan Flight 613. I'm Captain George Williams. We'll be taking off precisely on schedule this morning or this afternoon, arriving in Berlin in the late morning hours. I'm pleased to report that the <clears throat> Tempelhof International Airport is no longer experiencing the uh, difficulties reported in the morning news, and we are assured of a secure landing. Thank you for flying Luftland. We hope you enjoy the flight. Um, with that, he like turns very abruptly and walks into the cabin and uh, little signs come up to say no smoking slash chipping and fasten seat belts start flashing. And again, the stewardess uh, and stewards uh, start coming down through the aisles and making sure everyone knows how to put their harnesses on. <clears throat> do the, uh, do the screens we have have access to, and cause I'm kind of, what, what were the difficult, we don't know what the difficulties were at the airport yet, do we? Nope. Uh, is there anything on like on uh, that I could I could potentially find? Uh, on it the... has full net access. Yeah. Um, so yeah. just looking for whatever there might be, like whatever kind of news or difficulties are being reported at the airport. <laughs> you, you know, it's like there's a sudden spike on the the airport uh, or air uh, flight traffic because everyone's like, "What the hell happened to that airport?" <laughs> airport? <laughs> uh, yes, there was actually um, a resistance. Uh, club uh, had a it had a successive number of attacks on the airport they blew up a few planes the tarmac was damaged uh they were apprehended 
uh, several of them killed, but a few were apprehended. Everything's been cleaned up. There's not a lot of press on it other than uh, it has something to do with uh, Franco-German agitation going on right now. Uh, the French and the Germans are not having a good, happy time with each other. The uh, planes they blew up were they ones that were just kind of there and not had people on them, or yeah, no one was no one was hurt. Uh, it was all grounded planes, planes that hadn't boarded yet, planes that were under being maintained. Okay, I mean not okay, but like you know, <laughs> okay. So our so the nerves that that Gantu was feeling, uh, oh, excuse me, that Garfunkel was feeling. <laughs> have have ratcheted up a bit and so i'm sweating even more and i will yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is uh does it does uh uh garfunkel have a problem with flying is that is that a thing well, garfunkel's never flown before um well i mean gantu's never flown. But garfunkel this is this is old hat to him but uh, it's not looking very good i'm not i'm not holding it in very well so i would say i'm like in a heavy sweat and i'm clenching like the armrests i might pull one of the armrests off at a certain point so I just hand him a drink like here have three of these and fine. I'll do the airplane thing and I'll go to drink it but it'll miss me and it'll just kind of hit the side of my cheek <laughs> I lean over to Ivan and I'm like we gotta get us one of these this is pretty handy this, this is a great <laughs> yes hey um guys they were blowing up airplanes in a, a, <clears throat> in well it's Germany. okay it wasn't ours <laughs> yet but we are not airplane in Germany we will see if we get blown up when we arrive Sure, right. People try to blow us we'll up see. all the time. Remember your bowling ball? It's, a little, it's, it's too soon. It, oh, sorry. She wasn't blown up. She's just missing. She's kidnapped. Right. We will take her and retrieve and avenge. I yes. tried. I tried to get it now, but like, time sensitive job. Okay. That, that's something that Gantu can do with his uh, his street cred points. Is hire a team to go find his bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best. I don't know if I have enough street cred yet. I would donate my street cred for that as well. <laughs> um, Cut to the team like, it was a bowling ball? They paid us that much for a bowling ball? Man, we're set up. Something's going on. <laughs> <laughs> we need four of them. There has to be an elf, uh, a mage. <laughs> there you exactly. go. And if they get killed. <laughs> All right. So uh, once the everyone is strapped in, uh, it takes off uh, like the rocket. It proverbially, <laughs> proverbially is. Uh, it starts streaking down the runway, uh, and it seems like it's on the ground for a long time before there's any lift that actually starts to make it go up. And then the angle is is very extreme. It's you're going straight up, and so you're all being pushed back against your seats. Uh, as the acceleration continues, and as you're, who's uh, who's got the window seats? So two seats on either side, so two of you can have window seats. Can't I don't think Gantu. I don't think I don't think Garfinkel <laughs> wants a window seat. That's, so I'll that's, take a, that's I'll actually take a, true. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll take a window seat. Aisles, so I think, oh. I think Gantu prefers that. Yeah, Falk is uh, taking some high, highly active uh, things to just knock him out. <laughs> So he's he's gone. He's asleep and snoring in his chair already. Uh, so those of you with the uh, the window seats, you know you're you're being forced back in your chair. And the plane is going basically straight up like that. Got to. I can um, see the moon. I mean, <laughs> Simon, I can see the moon. <laughs> After uh, several minutes, really uh, you guys have gone through all the cloud cover, and you start seeing like a, a starry night uh, already as it uh, gets into the uh, suborbital. And uh, it seems like it's starting to stall out. Like you can hear the engines really whining and really stressing, and you can you can feel like it's going up slower and slower. And at the point where like the engines cut off and you start falling there's an immediate kick as the uh, rocket boosters kick in and then everybody is just thrown back into their seats uh, as the rocket boosts cut in and it's taking you right out of uh, uh, the Earth's, uh, Earth's field into near space. Now, um, this is the first time any of you have experienced this sort of thing. <laughs> let's, uh, let's see how well you, you uh, take it here. Let's do a... Oh... We'll make the most sense here. Again, sorry for the delay, as I have not uh, spent a lot of time with the rules yet. Uh, do, 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 do. Let's do. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, let's do uh, just double your willpower. Just do willpower plus willpower. Give me a roll on that. See how many successes you get. How did you guys do that? You just rolled it twice? I just doubled the number and then changed the number back when I was done rolling. Oh, aren't you smart? <laughs> okay. All right, all of you did pretty well. Um, so you're being forced back into this uh, this gel-like seat. As you know, you're for several you know, inches back into it. Um, it's perfectly designed for this sort of thing. And as the G-forces just suddenly increase, I mean, you feel not so good, but you're all able to just clench your teeth through it. And then there's a sudden freeing as you get out of the gravitational uh, field and you get in the floating start. So like you feel like you're not only pulled back out of the depths of this chair, but you're, you're actually uh, floating uh, just a little bit. And as soon as that happens in the fasten your seatbelt signs go off, Several people are smacking their harness, and uh, you're noticing now that on the on the floors and ceilings, there's these little handle-like grips, and they're grabbing them to pull themselves across to get to the uh, bathrooms. Uh, some of them don't make it, and they vomit, uh, oh, and the no. vomit floats. No. Zero <laughs> G vomit. No. That's so gross. No. It's easier to clean up that way. Uh, the ones that are used to this were already had the bags on their face to catch it. Uh, those that weren't and didn't read the pamphlets uh, just hurl and it's and uh, of course the stewardess are coming uh, stewards are coming out and they've got like these little almost like fly catching nets that are just scooping the vomit out of the air just like this is <laughs> no big deal no big deal I'll go with them. I'm going to punch my harness and just float around. Yep. Uh, they're they're floating out several of these like little mini uh, liquor bottles to everybody. Ooh. You know, it's Ooh. like a little game as it floats through the air, and people are looking for their favorites and grabbing them. <laughs> That's all right. Ah, grab so many of those. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many, so like, many. So this is better. This part's better. I like this part. The starting part, and then the blowing up and out, but the drinking and the floating. All right. See, friend, drinking is so you do not uh, do not think too much about blowing up part when land. No one's really ever accused me of thinking too much, but uh, I suppose you're right. <laughs> oh, we know you're smarter than you look. That's true. It's in the character <laughs> sheet. It's there. <laughs> yeah, it must be true. <laughs> uh, the little orc kid seems to be having a grand time of it. He's doing little flips in the air. Oh, that's he's awesome. laughing a little bit as he's rolling okay. around. Uh, and his guardian is there just to kind of make sure he's not bumping into anyone. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is kind of an expected thing for those that are used to this travel. This is uh, a little free time where people are holding on to the little hand rests that are all over the place to keep themselves from floating too far and just kind of enjoying things. Um, yeah, so everything seems to be normal uh, until uh, there is an explosion and the seating area is just filled with this... Uh, dense kind of grayish smoke which immediately cuts your visibility just to a few feet in front of your eyes and um, there's some screams you hear somebody yell out hijacking we're being hijacked <laughs> okay what are you guys doing uh so like there's this explosion and the smoke starts to fill the hole inside what are the what are the flight attendants doing uh well you again you can only see a few feet in front of your face uh, but okay. right before the explosion oh, uh they you know the, the explosion happened they quickly grabbed handholds and then cabins filled with smoke so that's really all you saw okay uh to be specific they didn't grab the handholds until after the explosion so it wasn't something they were anticipating you know, okay. yeah right. it was not Space pirates. okay oh man um, first thing I would probably do is start elbowing the shit out of Techno G. You should undo connection thing on Gantu so he can fight with arms. Sure, I can float over. His, his hands are fine. Like yeah. th that's not locked just out. It's his leg just shotgun. locked out. Oh, okay, yeah. just a shotgun. Okay. I prefer to punch anyway. Yeah. This is good. Oh, hey, there's a Matt in the chat. Hey, Matt. <laughs> yeah. We've got a listener. Wow, that's a, that's an unusual occurrence. <laughs> yeah, 
couple folks in here. Yeah, we got some people <laughs> hanging out. I feel Just like usually us should, watching uh, ourselves, watching <laughs> ourselves yeah. in this endless loop. That yep. Would... I feel like we should get those humanist pally dudes in the way of the danger. <laughs> uh, is the kid still floating around? Well, again, uh, let, let's just uh, yeah, let's just go down the down the list because initiative happens in okay, the same okay. way. So it'll be uh, it'll be uh, Chuck, Christopher, uh, and and you. So Chuck, what is your first reaction? Again, your visibility is literally two feet in front of your eyes. Well, I think. Um... And were you free free floating? Did you? Pop no, your harness? I was. No. I was still okay. setting down. So first thing I would do is pop my harness, um, yeah. and then probably start moving down. Do I get a sense of what direction the explosion came? Yeah, see, came that's in? just it. With, while you're free floating, you have no sense of direction. Other than yeah. if you were still harnessed, you kind of know front and back. And then you pop the harness, you start floating up, but you're not revolving. So you have, yes, you have sort of an idea what's ahead of you and what's behind you. Right. So the the explosion, could I tell if it was ahead or behind? It was ahead of you. You're I'm going to... Midway down. I'm going to start using the handholds and start moving ahead. Okay. On the floor or on the ceiling? Uh, are Since the, you can tell at this point. You can tell. I will... Well, the handholds are along the ceiling, yes, or did I... Both. They're along the floor. Oh, and I'll along move along the, the floor then. Yeah. That'll give me okay. more cover moving between the seats. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Christopher, what's your immediate reaction? Um, and were you floating or were you not floating? I was already floating around. Uh, okay. So, gonna... so in which case you have no, de you can't determine what's forward and back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, which is fine because I want to. Uh, Try to jack into some systems on the on the plane. Okay, prepare um, some defenses. If you are free floating, you're going to need to find a seat to pull yourself into and to physically jack in because this version of Cyberpunk, there's no Wi-Fi, right? You I'm going to do it. it. I'm going to do it. Uh, like pull myself down into a seat behind one of those humanist poly dickwads. Yeah, again, and, uh, you, like, you don't know. You can't. You're, you don't know if oh, you're can't forward or right. facing and you're two feet vision. So you can make a guess, but... Sure. I'll make a guess. <laughs> All, right. All right. Make me uh, make me an agility plus logic uh, to get into a seat. The logic will be whether or not you're getting near the poly club people or not. Okay. Agility. And... Six on the agility, two on the logic. Okay, and only two successes. So you think you're in the seats behind them, and you're definitely able to pull yourself down and jack into uh, in the entertainment console. Okay, now you won't be able to do anything else just yet. Sure. All right, Jeff, what is – you were you not free-floating, I take it. Or I was you? floating because I was grabbing the booze okay. and such, yeah. Right. Same thing, so you're disoriented, okay. and you can't see but a little bit in front of you. But could I hear where the voice yelling about we're being hijacked is coming from? That was from behind you. Okay. And would I have been able to recognize whether that was like one of the flight attendants that had been doing like talking at, at, at some point? Mm, um, make me a double logic test to see if you can remember the voice as well enough. Let's see, that's uh, so moderately that's, hard. Uh, that's five successes. Pretty good. Yeah. Um, it was not one of the stewardess. It was, um, you think, the uh, the lady that had the furs on. Because okay. you heard her talking on the phone when she first came on board. You'd think it was her. That's a pretty good number of successes. Okay. All right. Um, and I have no idea which way... Ivan or Technogy have gone because we still only have that two feet. Yeah. Okay. I think what I'll try to do is um, I'll grab whatever I can with it, which is within range. So whether it's a, like the seat back or whether it's like a like a ceiling handheld, and try to propel myself towards the the, the shouting, like her shouting. Okay. Uh, you grab what feels like one of the handhold areas, but mm -hmm. you don't know if it's on the ceiling or floor. Again, mm -hmm. you're 
really disoriented sure. and you start heading in a direction again you yeah. don't know which direction you're heading I'm just in. all right I'm just going towards wherever i heard her yell we're getting hijacked that, that's pretty much all i'm going sure. on right now all right let me roll some dice here okay um as <laughs> mr garfunkel uh starts pulling himself along uh you come face to face with um guy who's got it's he's not that he's got a completely shaved head there's a little bit of stubble on it and like a very a very severe military cut is kind of what you're seeing and as he pulls close to you he uh he reaches out with his left hands and you see um little dagger like things come out and he seems to know who you are uh and he's <laughs> trying to stick those things in to to make you uh to make you bleed from new holes that you you, you do not currently have. It's my <laughs> kind of my kind of air travel. You found Wolverine. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> these actually are small. These are called uh, these are called spurs instead of the full okay. um, rippers. Got machetes um, coming out. Yeah. Uh, you do notice that he's got a bracelet on that should be stopping him from doing that, uh, but it doesn't look like it is. So how are you defending against that? So, um. Let's see. Uh, I mean, I, I am kind of layered in dermal plating. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think what I'll just, I'll be doing is I'll try to be using my, my hammer fist to just direct the blades towards a part of my body that is physically okay. reinforced. Um, how about close combat and logic then? Okay. As so, your defense. So then I roll close combat. And then when I, when they ask for the, the pop-up, it's the be logic. Mm -hmm. I think. Let's see if I do that right. All right. Well, it just rolled on its own. Sorry. Whoops. Didn't mean to roll that twice. All right. Okay. This so third one's going to be correct. This third. Don't <laughs> ignore those two because I, mm -hmm. I figured I figured it out. Okay. Uh, four. Wow. Okay. Uh, you, I'm rolling horribly tonight, which is good for you. Uh, so yeah, you're able to intercept your uh, mechanical arm and just kind of deflect uh, those spurs. Uh, but yeah, he's he is upon you. Uh, so we're going back around. Uh, Chuck? Yeah. What is Mr. Paul Art doing? Uh, I would keep... You were pulling yourself forward? Yeah, pulling myself forward till I find something, I guess. I mean... Okay. Um, well, you don't run into anybody, uh, and you're pulling yourself along the floor. So uh, occasionally you'll see like a leg come into view of mm -hmm. people that are still seated and still strapped in. Yeah. Uh, but eventually you actually come to the cabin door so like beyond this door is actually the flight compartment yeah okay okay um Anything you want to do do i see like looking around that area any kind of like uh environmental controls or anything hmm. good question um you know that around each seat they have those those things to give you a little bit of extra air yeah or a little light the panels like that uh you actually are to where the stewards would set it for the whole cabin so yes you find it i'll turn that on maybe getting some air movement might help with visibility all right so you're going to turn up the air basically to yeah. try and suck out some of this all right yeah okay you do yeah. that and that's what i'll do all right. Uh, what is Philip Charles Arthur George Windsor <laughs> doing sure now? The, the, the Prince of Wales, uh, as <laughs> commonly referred to, um, is going to use his exploit program mm -hmm. to uh, bypass and try to find. I feel like there's some type of gel system for when you crash in this thing. It fills the whole space with gel. Um, to prevent you from bouncing around and dying. Okay. Uh, when you hack into the system, uh, the first thing you notice is there's already a hacker in here. Ooh. Um, the hacker has turned off the distress beacons. Um, you're not even sure, uh, since they've been mucking with things, that the pilot or anyone in the pilot area, I'm not well versed with planes, I don't know what that's called. The cockpit. cockpit. <laughs> uh, you're not even sure they're aware that there's anything going on back here um, because yeah, everything's I, being directed. Me. There you go. <laughs> uh, so if you want to do anything here, there is an active person that is uh, basically shutting everything down that you're going to need to overcome. So you're going to be the aggressor. They're going to be the defender. Absolutely. So, mm -hmm. I got a thing for this. 
All right. Um, what do we got to do? Uh, uh, it's up to you uh, as to how you want to do it. Well, <clears throat> I call it rig foo, the art of rig based mental combat, of course. Mm. That's always been my thing. So, uh, <clears throat> So I want to sneak around. I think this first thing I want to sneak around him um, in the system and maybe just uh, flip two switches. One would be turn the intercom on to the cockpit from the main cabin mm -hmm. so that the pilots hear that some weird stuff is going on. Um, and the other one is the where the... Can I see Garfunkel? You yeah, know. No, you no? cannot. Yeah. All right. Then I. Uh... <laughs> it's trigger it all. Um, it's really smoky, huh? Oh, I know what I want to do. I want to unseal a door uh, and get some real good airflow in here. <laughs> no, you, you realize that you're in space. Yeah. yeah there's no atmosphere. Okay. <laughs> well, no. Oh to the uh, to the to the lower cargo level, which probably doesn't have air in it. Right. So, All right. So you just... want to? Okay. So you want to space the cargo hold? Oh, well, I want I, I want to open the the hatch in between our cabin and the cargo hold. Oh, okay. To All make right. an airflow. So you're gonna okay? Because so it'll gonna replenish the, the air in the cabin. I'm sure. sure. No, I got you. This is going to be an extended action, okay? Because first you've got to end run around the hacker that's already in the system. So instead right. of facing right. them face to face, you're trying to go around them. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, then after that, you're trying to accomplish two things in the system if you can get around them. So let's do the get around roll first. Okay. Okay. It's probably going to be logic and hacking, unless you can make a. Um, so with my exploit program, mm -hmm. it says I can reroll two dice on non-cyber combat hacking tests. Yep. And that's, so that I'll make would the, be what this is. Yeah. I'll make the hacking, uh, well, that's a matrix action for the cyber deck. Um, well, yeah, this okay. would be a matrix action. Okay. So then that says may reroll one die on matrix actions as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, firewall plus one matrix condition monitor six may run one program at a time, which is the exploit program. So I'm going to run the exploit program on the cyber deck, uh, make the hacking roll. So, oh my God, six successes. <clears throat> Ooh, one, two, oh. three, four, five, six successes. Okay. So it's, it's a bump. Uh, I, now, you get to re-roll some of your failed dice, though, right? Yeah, I can re-roll two dice on any non-cyber combat hacking test. So okay, I so re -roll just roll two. two other dice and see if they give you more successes. Nope, yeah. no more successes. Okay, so now you can spend... Oh, and uh, I can re-roll one from the cyber deck, sorry. Oh, yeah, go ahead. There's there you one. go. There's your success. <laughs> so it's a near thing. The person that's in the system is really good yeah. um, and almost uh, catches you, but you're able to put different layers of data between you and them uh so yeah so that's that's basically the first part of what you're doing okay um <laughs> all right apparently uh you've got a you've got a, a critic here of your of your hand acting skills mr garfunkel as they're trying to put an end to that career <laughs> i am going to put one of those hands directly through his torso so that Ooh. it appears on the other side so that uh it's yeah. a magic show and it'll be the one that doesn't show up in the camera all that often. And it's the metal. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> I think I'm only left-handed. Nope. Uh, so, um, so do I just, so would I be, okay, so I have Cyberarm, I do have as an amp, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so then, am I rolling again, uh, close combat melee? And am I pairing that with strength? Uh, yeah, if you're just uh, whole out, just oh, you know, I'm hauling just, out with your yeah, oh, yeah go for, for it. Sure. Yep. Okay. And so then, okay, I'll roll this, and then we'll worry about damage and such. Mm -hmm. okay. And they're defending by basically using the zero G. Uh, they seem to be a bit skilled in the ways of zero G combat, and they're basically just uh, trying to roll over you. Actually, yeah. I should be penalize. I should penalize you because of the zero G. <laughs> but you've got a good firm handhold on something. Mm -hmm. So this roll is, is good. Uh, uh, one success, Tom. Yeah, horrible <laughs> roll. Oh, God, it's terrible. 
Uh, well, they got two successes. So, okay. Uh, so it, what happens is they basically just let go what they were holding on. And so they float above your fist as it goes, uh, goes through. Okay. Okay. I'm still getting used to the, you know, Z axis here. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Uh, I'll be, uh, I'll be sh- like, if it's a free action, I'll be like shouting, you know, contact. Blah, blah, okay. Blah. Yeah. So what do you shout? Uh, uh, you got a. We got a man with some big fingernails here. He's trying to stab me. Uh, Mr. Paul Art, uh, as you get the air control system uh, going a little bit higher, it seems to be working. It's pulling some of the smoke out of the cabin as a uh, new fresher air is being circulated in. Uh, and as this happens, uh, you are going across the floor above you launching herself uh using the ceiling as a springboard she's launching herself down you and as she's about to plow into you you see from her fists again these little studded spikes come out however her wristband starts blinking red as she extends those uh claws and uh she takes a really powerful jolt uh, that sends her off target and she rolls kind of away from you mm-hmm. you're not sure if she's still conscious or not but that that bracelet flared off as soon as she turned on her her cyber um she looked like she knew you like you were definitely oh. a target okay. <laughs> they they tracked us onto the plane that's great man i didn't know hand commercials were such a cutthroat business <laughs> yeah, no idea <laughs> i have a whole backstory with you two ready to go with this going on. that's wonderful it's All right, great. so the visibility is a bit better. There's still some wispy bits of smoke around. And by the way, this is lingering. You've had some uh, experience with smoke grenades before. Someone lit off a smoke grenade in the compartment. That's what all this is. Oh, okay. Ooh. Uh, so it's clearing a little bit so you can see uh, so you can see it a little bit better. These the, were passengers. Yep. Um, let's see. The... Uh, the frazzled uh, middle-aged woman that was uh, looking like she was scared to death when she boarded doesn't look scared to death now. She has a gun of some sort in her hand. She's not aiming at you. She's aiming at the woman that's kind of floating away from you. And then, so you can see that pretty clearly. So what are you doing? Oh, man. Um, <clears throat> so I did I, I heard Gantu, or am I too far away to have heard You heard Gantu, yep. Uh, I will go back along the floor, propelling myself as quickly as I can to try and meet up with Gantu and help him out. Uh, Seeing as the green-haired lady has a gun on the floating woman now, uh, I'll let them worry about themselves. So yeah, that'll that'll be my at least uh, plan. Okay, uh, so as you're doing that, the woman uh, takes a, a very practiced shooting stance and she fires uh, and it strikes the woman that was floating away from you and you see her, she lights up. It's like this is uh, uh, like a taser sort of device. Oh. Uh, like, And she goes completely rigid, vomits a little bit and it's like her whole body is like bored straight as it just t- starts to tumble through the air. Oh. Uh, and she calls out, you injured? Uh, I'm, I'm good. She did not get me. I do not know what is going on, but I thank you kindly for being a hero. All right. Uh, Techno G, uh, second part of your mission. You're exchanging air between the cargo compartment and the top compartment. Right. All right. So this is mostly just making yourself very quickly familiar with the system involved to get the right switch. So probably uh, logic and let's see. You're trying to do this fast too. So logic, do logic. Uh, well, what kind of skills do Elec- you have? I've got can... electronics and uh, well, that's piloting ground and piloting drone. I've got a bunch of piloting skills, but electronics and engineering. Either one of those. You can use the one that's best to uh, figure out what the system is set up as. I think electronics gives me a three plus logic looks like. It's just an average test, so we had three successes. One, two, two, six. Okay, yeah, you do it. And uh, the air starts to clear faster. And what you guys see is there are, well, there were, uh, one, two, three, four. 
there were four aggressors. One of them has been uh, zapped and is kind of floating through the air, rigid as a board. The other three, one on Gontu is uh, doing some aerial acrobatics and is diving back on you. He's pushing off of a seat and just hurtling towards you. Uh, two more seem to be making their way, one to Techno G, who is, you can see he's jacked in, so you know his eyes are rolled back and he's not really moving. One of them is going for Techno G. Another one is making their way towards uh, Ivan. So, gone to. Uh, the one on you is, again, he's springing off a chair and he's trying to put those small razor blades through your throat. What are you doing to defend yourself? Uh, okay, I think... Um... Hmm. I think I'm going to try to like, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like the, I'm, I'm, I'm built to be a tank. So I'm just yeah. going to, again, just use my cyber arm to try to just, uh, parry it into a protected area. Like I'm, I think Sounds I good. know what I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. So that would be, um, uh, you, you don't forget do, to, you had me do combat and logic last time. Uh, yeah, or combat and strength if you're just bullying it out. And don't yeah. forget to add in your shadow amp for your arm. So my shadow amp for my arms, that's one of the things I was I was unsure of because uh, do you – because I've got the damaging stuff, so I wasn't sure if that's something that you – Okay, so you only went with damaging then for that? Yeah. Um, hmm. yeah, so, yeah, so I guess don't add it in for this, but uh, thematically uh, it'll give you a little bit of bonus for armor there. Okay. We'll say any damage done is going to go to the arm instead of to the fleshy okay. bits. Okay. So then two uh, on the defense. Okay, three. So they did succeed. <clears throat> All right. Let me see what the damage on those things are. And since you're kind of just blocking with the arm, this is going into your cyber arm, okay? Okay. Uh, so you're not going to take any damage, but it could deactivate your arm. Oh. As a matter of fact... You know what? Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. I'm going to spend one of my GM plot points to use the frag it or jam it <laughs> plot directive where the, the things actually do pierce through your mechanical arm and you're like, Haha, no problem, except it actually does nick a servo and the arm just kind of goes limp. Okay. I mean, you two take things, no damage at all. Two things. Okay, so if, they, if I'm not taking any damage, I was going to say, like, I do have dermal plating that reduces all damage by three, and then I have toughness, which reduces damage by an extra one, so mm -hmm. any sort of damage done. So if that if that's to my arm specifically, then I guess it wouldn't apply. Yeah, so I'm just uh, I'm throwing in a plot point just to kind of change the narrative that your arm just depowers. Now, you can counter that. You can spend your own to get the, uh, what's it called, never give up, which is to, uh, no, that's not the one. Uh, Oh, yeah, the ignore cooldown condition. So you can spend your own plot point to ignore it and say, nope, backup systems come online. Uh, but that's up to you. Okay. How often do those plot points uh, refresh? Depends. It's when you play to your character's uh, positive and negative qualities, you get them I'll back. Burn one then. Yeah, I'll burn yeah. one then. Okay. Uh, yeah, so it comes back online and you save yourself from taking some damage. Okay. All right. So uh, it is your action. What do you want to do? Uh, okay, well then, at this point, I will try to, like, I want to try to propel myself off of whatever surface I'm closest to and try to do, like, a Superman punch into him and just try to smash him into something. Mm, okay. Uh, include agility into okay. this, then, uh, just to make up for the zero G. Okay, so close combat and agility, then? Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's five. Okay. And again, he seems to be pretty practiced at zero G combat. Uh, one, two, three, four. So you still hit him. Okay. So how much damage do you do with that fist of yours? And I'll give you a bonus for the uh, leaping that you did. So my cyber arm has damaging plus three. Plus three. Okay. So normally it's going to be based on your strength. How many dice of strength do you have? Uh, eight. Okay. Um, did you take your fist as a killing weapon or is it a stun weapon? Like normally a fist punch is stun, but since it's a metal fist, I could see it being a killing attack. I'll leave that up to you. Uh, probably killing. Killing attack. Okay. <laughs> so what is your strength? Uh, eight. <laughs> 
Let me see. And I plus three on the cyber armor. Yeah, give me just a second here. He ain't that practice at zero G combat after all. Mm. Sorry for looking up again. No, I have. No uh, I'm not really up on the system yet. All right. Uh, where the heck are your weapons? Come on. Just changed my one of my skills because I didn't use one of the qualities that adds to it. So we all got some learning to do. It's all right. So it's plus three, and I'm yeah. going to give you a plus two. So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine points of physical damage. I think that might take him out. Let's see here real quick. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah. Well, he's at minus three, um, but he's not out yet. So, yeah, I mean, it it really, you rocked him really hard. He goes spinning off. Uh, he's bleeding just out of his, his nose, inside of his mouth. You pegged him pretty good, okay. uh, and he seems rattled. Okay. All right. So we're back again to uh, Chuck. Yeah. Um, so have I finally closed in on Gantu? Yes. And the dude he's fighting? Mm -hmm. um on the way you said there's one going after techno g though right yes and he techno g is out you can see that he is jacked in um and mm -hmm. i'm going to do something incredibly dangerous <laughs> i am going to cast a spell oh no okay what are you casting i am going to cast mana bolt at the one that's going after techno g okay uh, make your normal pull and then roll an additional D6, but roll it separately. Okay. okay. I'm going to add a glitch die to this because of where you're casting. Uh, I don't know how to roll a spell. Okay. So a, a spell is going to be depending on what kind Should of Should be spell willpower. It yeah. Yeah. It's S plus will. What is that? Strength? Sorry, give me a second. Willpower is one of your stats, so. S oh, I have a sorcery. Okay. Sorcery, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'll just click sorcery. So I got five successes, yeah. and okay. then my separate D6 is a six. Ooh, that's actually good for you. That's oh. an exploit. All right. Okay, so uh, what you do is you can increase damage. Uh, by half or increase the effect by another scale. So what are, what were you trying to do? I was doing Mana Bolt, and Mana Bolt's listed as damage of 6P slash AA defense. Um, I'll just I'll yeah, throw it all ahead, into talk. damage. Okay, throw it into damage, all right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, so you do half again as much damage. So what's your total damage with that? Uh, how does that come out? The mana bolt says it's damage of 6P slash AA. So it'll do nine. Oof. Okay. Okay. And I think they get a resistance uh, to their mana bolt. Uh, uh, defense. Uh, it says defense equals S plus W. So sorcery plus will. All right. Will. So it's just will. Yep. Okay. Uh, one success. <laughs> All right, so you fry this person's synapse. Um, so I said uh, six plus, so six, seven, eight, nine, three, six. Same thing. Yeah, they're basically they're not quite taken out. They're one one block away from being unconscious or, de or dead. Okay. I think you're just a, su a stun damage, actually. That could um, be, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so it really rattled. Um, Starts uh, your zero Z, so they start floating <laughs> a little bit. You see the blood comes out of their nose and the side Good. of their eyes and kind of floats in the air a little bit. Good. All right, so Techno G, uh, your third and last action was to do what? I want to flip the switch. Uh, the intercom system, right. I want to flip the switch here. It's got to be around here somewhere. <laughs> nice. So, so that the, the pilots in the cockpit can hear what's going on in the cabin. Okay. Yeah, sounds good. Here. That uh, hacking check. <laughs> yeah. Hacking logic. All right. So I fixed my hacking skill because I have a quality. I have Code Slinger, which gives me two more dice to hacking. Okay. So <clears throat> it should. Oops, that was the wrong one. 
it should be this one. Hacking two. So yeah, that works. Uh, you turn it on, and it's actually. Did you mean for it to be two way so you can hear what's going on inside the pilot's area as well? Sure. Okay. Uh, so what you hear is the pilot and co-pilot are saying, "Try and raise them again." Uh, this, uh, communication systems are out, Captain. Well, put on the external lights. Put on the uh, the signal warnings. Uh, yeah, so you can hear them talking. So they're aware that something is going on, at least that their communications have been interrupted. Then I'm going to jack out. All right. Uh, so you jack out to this guy hovering above you as this graceful trail of blood comes out of his ears, nose, and his eyes. <laughs> and uh, you see Ivan pretty close by there. Uh, gone to. Looking out. So this guy is mostly done for, like he's barely conscious. Um, you know, he's, he's not completely out, but he doesn't look like he's going to be doing anything soon. Anything you want to do? Are there any, uh, any that are not uh, accounted for at this point? Like uh, if I would, I would have seen Ivan or heard Ivan doing something. Are there, are there Give me a, make me a perception check. Okay. Uh, three. <laughs> All right. Um, so you're looking around, and uh, so you see the one woman that's got the, the gun out, uh, looking very professional in her gun stance now. Um, and she seems to be taking uh, aim at first the one that is hovering above you, and then she changes the target to the one that's hovering above Gantu, and then she's looking for other targets as well. That's easy to spot. But what's not so easy to spot, there is a woman who is jacked in to uh, her... Uh, terminal and you see like she's got unfolded in front of her what looks like her own cyber deck uh for this kind of chaotic situation it seems it's awfully odd okay for someone to be jacked in right now like that all right um i'm gonna go smash the deck and uh grab her by the throat okay uh smashing the deck actually is gonna cause a little dump shock here let me <laughs> No one accused me of being intelligent. <laughs> Lower the bar. Two, three. Okay, yeah, she succeeds that, so she's not brain fried immediately. So she comes out of it, and uh, you notice as she does, um, she's also wearing one of those bracelets, but there's no lights on it. Mm -hmm. um, and she starts moving that hand up. You see her wrist rotates, and a barrel comes out of it. Uh, okay. You have the drop on her, of course, though. So you said you were going to you were going to pick her up. Is that what you said? Yeah, I'll just. Uh, yeah, I'll grab her. If I see the gun coming out, um, I will mm -hmm. go ahead and try to clamp down with my uh, my cyber arm to sort of prevent that that gun from coming out, that barrel from coming out. Sure, uh, sounds good. Um, make me. Um... An agility plus something. Agility because you have to grab the arm. Hmm. Okay. I Even mean, if you got a close combat would be close fine. Close combat's what I've got. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Uh, three. Yeah. That, yeah. Sure. She's not. She's not incredibly strong, and her cyber arm is not made for strength. It's just got hidden hidden weaponry. So you grab it, um, and do what with it? This is important. Uh, I want to like just crush it. Like try to. Oh, okay. It, crush it. Okay. Yeah um yeah yeah so you do that yeah. so christopher what's your character name again your your fake name oh my gosh just charles, give me the first one charles, charles <laughs> philip arthur george windsor the prince of wales okay got it and i'll be shouting out uh hey sir charles uh just get them all wanna... wrong. Yeah. Hey, Chuck, uh, hey, hey, Chuck. Chuck, Bill, Phil, <laughs> Art. Hey, Billy. So you crush her arm just as she fires her weapon, uh, as it no longer has a barrel in one piece for the projectile to come out. It kind of just explodes in her arm. Nice. So your arm is kind of kicked back as you come back holding her arm in your hand. Uh, which unfortunately is not a clean severing between the metal and the meat. So she just gushes blood out of that stump and it's just floating through the air. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll be calling, so I'll be calling for Charles. So, cause I'll recognize the deck and everything like that. And I'll be, calling <coughs> him but I'll be using his fake name. So, uh, <laughs> Chuck, yeah. Uh, 
now that you're free of combat, uh, what Gantu didn't catch because he wasn't angled just right is uh, the woman that helped you. There's one more person. This is another woman that is, she's kind of getting zero G above her. She's getting ready to spring off the ceiling and go down on her with these claws coming out again, like right for the neck. Um, you're the only one that sees it right now. So what do you do? Uh, the person that she's targeting doesn't see it either. I am going to very much risk it again. <laughs> okay. Same deal. Uh, yeah. and put in that glitch die. So I'm going to do it. worked out for you last time. It did. Uh, we'll see if I'm lucky enough this time. So I'm going to do my sorcery roll. Only three successes and my glitch. It's just a two okay. this time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, only one success on their end. Uh, right, so you blast uh, this thing. You didn't get an extra this time, so it does yeah. six points of stun damage. Okay. Um, throws them off, uh, so they're going to have a minus two penalty to their attack. Okay. That's the best I could do. One, two, three successes. So unfortunately, she does come down, and you see those claws just go in like – Oh through yeah. both sides of the shoulder and neck um, into this person that was trying to help you. Um, and so the blood just sprays everywhere. Uh, you don't know if that was mortal yet or not, and that is yet to be determined. Um, Techno G. Um, <clears throat> so I have oh, the air's clear now, by the way. Now, everyone, you can see the cockpit Good. from Good. one end to the other, or the body of the plane, I should say. Cockpit's still closed. I stood up from being uh, jacked in, and the the dude floating by me is not dead, right? No, but they're not moving either. <laughs> the eyes and, are rolling back. You can see they're breathing, but they're not really doing much else. And the other one has her claws stuck in somebody right yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I want to loop a foot into one of the handholds and grab this dude and slam him into chick with the with yeah, the blade. Yeah, kind of launch him down. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what. Uh, okay, this is going to be close combat and agility or logic, your choice. Either logic to get the trajectory right or agility just to throw it just right. All right. I ain't got no close combat stuff. Yep. I just straight agility it. It's zero, Sam. I took it all. Sorry. <laughs> all of it. All, all of it. it. <laughs> I got five successes. It's a little harder than average, but I only got two against you, so it works. Uh, it's a projectile. Yeah, we'll call it uh, stun damage. Uh, the person's already got a lot of stun, though, from uh, Ivan. So that's enough. To, but everywhere now. Uh, <laughs> He's flying around. Knocks, knocks the other opponent off. Uh, and they both go flying. The one that just stabbed the person slams into a wall and is out. And so you take a moment to kind of look around. Uh, Gantu, this is coming around to you, but now that the air is clear, everyone kind of see this. The three stewards that were in the cabin right before the smoke grenade went off are dead. They're, oh. they, they've been, they, they're, a leg or a hand has been hooked into um, one of the grips so that they wouldn't be flying through the cabin. And you look, they've been stabbed through the neck. Who's going to uh, get us drinks now? Yep. So the person that was trying to help you, Ivan, is uh, kind of laying down, kind of clutching the wounds, and is uh, 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 still alive, but doesn't look like they're doing well. I can try and help them. Okay. Uh, How do you want to do that? Well, actually, let's give Gontu his turn first. Yeah, so Gontu, okay. again, this is what you see. Okay. Well, I still have the, the Decker lady who's not... Right. Like, knocked out. She's like, I know. Well, I wrecked yeah. Her She's yeah. bleeding out. <laughs> yeah, I want to me. <laughs> well, I called for you, but I'm I seeing a dude being... around. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. So I'm going to try to take whatever straps there are here to kind of like hog tire a bit, if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. So that she's like, so she can't try to move anywhere. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so. You think that she'll probably be dead in the next minute or two with as much blood as she's losing, though? Oh. Okay. Well. Um, Okay, well then, if that's the case, then I will say, uh, 
tell me who you work for and what the hell's going on and maybe I'll get you some help here. All right, let me uh, just see how reasonable condition she's in here. Show over to me, I'll, I'll just jack oh. it in. Yeah. Ooh. All right, she's like, hey, help first and I'll tell you whatever, if everything you want to know. I'm not going to last long enough to tell you otherwise. Uh, yeah, she's going really pale from blood loss. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, can I try? Okay, then. Then, all right. So what I'll try to do then is I'll try to, because it was an ugly, it was an ugly explosion on her arm, right? Yeah, and the the whole arm kind of got ripped off and blown apart. Is there and any so stump where the metal left or meets? Anything? Well, the where the metal meets the flesh is where the problem is because it tore off the fleshy bit, and okay. so like she's just. She just got this huge open wound where her shoulder joint used to be. She's bleeding out through it. Okay. So there's nothing I can run a, a tourniquet around. Oh, no. Uh, no, no. We're beyond tourniquet. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, shoot. I mean, I'm not the most medically inclined person here. Um, can I come assist? I, I was going to say, I have healing magic. Ask, okay. You can ask uh, for assistance and so then I'll that do that. puts them I'll, into your... I'll do that. I'll keep. I'll keep a close. I mean, I'll stupidly be trying to cover up like the bleeding. Like it's okay. Yeah. I can fix you. And I'll call for some aid uh, from whoever. I'm like I need healing here. Come on, man. All right. So technology, your closest. Uh, Ivan's uh, a little bit further away. So either one of you could do what you want to do. I would just grab a first aid kit. Uh, there's got to be some in the steward yep, station on the walls. area. Yeah. yeah. So I just grab one of those and pop it open. And since I have some in my SUV, uh, yeah. it's actually in my in my, in my gear inventory. Oh, shit. My, what am I thinking? So I would I would be like this. Put, put this yeah. on her. You I'm know what like, trauma patches are. So I yeah, have a trauma, patch trauma patches. Too, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Then, well, okay, so Technogy, you slap a trauma p uh, patch on that person. And then I steal uh, her cyberdeck. <laughs> well, which is broken, unfortunately. Gone to smash oh, it. Oh, man. <laughs> looking, for, looking for fobs or anything, any kind of data storage. Right. So, uh, Ivan, uh, seeing that Technogy did that, do you want to take your trauma patch yeah, and help the other stick, person? Yeah, absolutely, I do. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so we're we're out of combat now. Uh, as you... Uh, it's, Everyone else that's in the chamber is uh, like they're all eyes wide. Uh, they're just waiting for like, you know, explosive decompression or something because the air is really, you can hear the whining yeah. as it's, uh, you turned it on high, Ivan, and then you're oh, circulating yeah. down from the cargo hold. So it sounds like all your air is being, you know, thrown out to space. That's what it sounds like. But everyone's just like, and what, are we dying? Is this what death is like? I'll, I'll call out. <laughs> Because the intercom is wide open right now. I'll call it out is. to the pilots and be like, hey, fix the airflow. And uh, all the stewards are dead. Well, three of them are dead. Um, right. Um, well, yeah. But as soon as you say that and then you hear that, you hear the intercom, like it, you hear it click off as they, they turn it off. Um, and, you know, you hear the security bolts firing uh, that's sealing off the compartment, your compartment from their compartment. The woman yeah. that you're helping, Ivan, yeah. uh, is aware enough that she reaches in and she, you know, pulls out her air marshal badge. Oh, out so that you see that. Um, and she's uh, like, just get, "Just get me over to an intercom." I will comply entirely with that. Yeah. All right. Uh, she explains the situation uh, to the pilot and co-pilot. Um, gives her gives them her badge number and says that. Uh, it looks like everybody is uh, subdued, subdued or dead. Um, get us, you know, get us to a landing as fast as possible. Uh, in which case, you hear the captain come on board. Says, "Everybody, please uh, strap down. We're going to make a very quick entry. Um, hang on to your hats and your lunches." <laughs> oh, Simon, you're going to love this. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm still like pushing stuff back in. <laughs> We'll just strap her in. It'll hold her together okay. for a while. <laughs> right. I'll sit next to her. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> the uh, the little orc kid is still kind of trampolining in the air. The the grandmother or guardian is trying to grab a foot. Like we gotta get you strapped in. <laughs> once the call goes through, well, I guess probably once the call goes through the strap in, I'll help the air marshal in. But I'll probably yell at Gantu or something like that. Like you should help the child. They are precious. 
Okay, I will fly towards the child covered in blood and guts and be like, <laughs> I'll get, come on, you gotta get your seat, boy. Let's go. You don't like, want cool. to <laughs> What happened to you? Oh, Is that ketchup? <laughs> oh, God. It's, yep. Ketch, ketchup, <laughs> sriracha. Yep. All that. Now get in your seat. <laughs> The guardian is just wide-eyed looking at you. Face I got going this, man. Like, no uh, worries. He's very good with, with small people. Yep. I'm All a right. friendly man. I uh, assume everybody straps down. Don't uh, worry. I'm a hand model. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody uh, do anything about the uh, floating people that are not quite dead, but probably will be no. <laughs> if they're not strapped down? No. <laughs> They're just the ones that attacked us, right? Yeah. Nah. Just, That's a no for one. me. Yeah, we got one. Yeah. We got yeah. one in bad shape too, so Well, we should I mean they could cause a hazard to the to the rest of us. I'll push them all the way to the back. Okay. That's of yeah. The plane. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, it's where they prepare Bro, I all stack the food. them in the bathroom like cordwood. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There's one one of the Japanese businessmen is still on the toilet as you go in. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. <laughs> he runs out. Um, okay, so you guys, uh, even rushing it, uh, reentry is still going to take uh, some time, uh, like hours. Um, oh, okay. In the meantime, Gonto, you strap the woman down without an arm uh, next to you, so she's. Uh, put the trauma patch on her, which is keeping her from bleeding out. Um, she's still pretty out of it, uh, but this might be a good time to interrogate somebody. Yeah, and that's what I will be doing. Yeah, but like a lot of strange things can happen on reentry. You don't want uh, you don't want to go bumping around too much, you know. Um, I would probably say I'm probably back in my seat, but kind of keeping an eye on what Gantu's doing. I'll probably call you and be like, "I do have stim patch. If you need to wake her up more." Uh. If I need to, yeah. Okay. Do I need that to, Bert? All right. All right. Um, so she's uh, speaking uh, kind of, you know, her tongue is thick and uh, she's not making too much sense. But you get out, uh, you hear she's part of uh, a German poly club called the Eagles Union of Destiny. Uh, you remember seeing that on the news. These were the people that bombed, uh, that blew up the planes on the tarmac where you were heading to land. Uh, yesterday. Okay. Uh, she says something about Murloc hiring for the French. Uh, that you're a bunch of French sympathizers. Uh, surely sent to cause trouble. It's really disjointed, but what you get out of it is that somehow they figured out that Murloc hired you guys and sent you to Germany. And because of that, you have to be French sympathizers. Okay. Well, the key thing is that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, um, it's really disjointed. It doesn't sound like it has anything to do with you personally. Just that Murloc hired you and sent you to Germany. Okay. So then, uh, um, I mean, I guess I, I want to know, like, what do you know about Murloc? Like something like that. All right. Yeah. Um, uh, lousy hunchback bastard. Keeps sending runners in, causing problems. Always helping, helping the French, destroying our country. A hunchback, little penis bastard. Too much money, no common sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. she seems to know of him. Maybe a little bit more of him than right. this. <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, I'll. Uh, uh, Definitely will linger, and I, I, I kind of want to ask a follow up on the small penis thing, but I'm going to gloss <laughs> over that for now. It's hunchback too. It's curved. Oh, it's very funny. <laughs> <laughs> there oh, are dear, strange what? lumps that cannot be explained. And I'll ask like, how did you know? How did you know he hired us? Like, I just want to know how uh, she found out about us. I'm very, I'm very good at what I do. I, I'm in the system. I have bots that report. I knew, I knew you were hired. I don't know why you were hired, but if you were sent to Germany by that hunchback prick, it had to be for the French. You know why we were hired? What do you mean? I don't, I don't know why. I don't. Oh, she doesn't know why. Sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, hey, uh, anything else we should be asking this woman? You're very handsome no, no. for a man with two arms. I, I seem to only have one. 
It's okay. We'll get you a new one. It's fine. They probably have them somewhere where you're going, you know. Your friend, your friend that was in the computers, uh, tell him, tell him his hacking is shit. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, hey, Chuck Billy, whatever the hell your name is. Uh, uh, she said Punch her in the throat for me. <laughs> I mean, I got all the way around her, so I already yeah. drained his. I already drained his accounts while he was getting by me. Oh no! I'm buying a nice out. house in the Riviera now. It's all right, I didn't have any money. We don't have shared accounts, so I guess that's okay. Uh, all right. Well, now so, she doesn't. I'll <laughs> say, and then I guess the last question I, I'll just ask is like, is like, what other crews are coming after us? We're, we're it. Okay. No more. No more. Right. If we don't report in, if we don't report in, the EU will send in more. We will never surrender to those surrender monkeys. Never <laughs> surrender. <laughs> surrender. <laughs> Just because petty vengeance is my thing today, I'm going to drop into her, her uh, profiles that she's half French. Yo! Oh wow, that's intense. I'll show you who's got. Yeah, she's purged from the club with prejudice. Uh, All right. yeah, EU being Eagles Union, uh, not uh, European gotcha. Union. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. I figured. <laughs> All right. I mean, I, I think that's all. Yeah, she's think. slurring more. It looks like she's like, like she's struggling to stay conscious at this point. Um, okay. If what she's telling you is true, like you were just hit because they assumed, right? They just assumed that. Uh, Murloc hired you to do something uh, for the French. Yeah. Okay. So they don't necessarily. Uh, yes, they don't. They don't. They don't seem to know our ultimate reason why we're here, and they just are associating us with all of Murloc's other hires, which yeah. had something to do with French sympathizing. And this Eagle Union of Destiny might try to send more after us if they don't report. Which I will see if Techno can try to figure out some way to maybe fake a report or whatever to them. I don't know how. Like, like, or I guess I could ask that. Like, how do we, how do we contact them or something? You know, whatever. Like, how do you, how do you, how do you uh, check in with your, you know, your uh, whoever gave you the job? Well, my beautiful cyber deck had a contact number in it. I guess that's gone now. Yeah, I know. No one really remembers phone numbers anymore, do they? It's all just you know, punched in and okay. Is there another oh, way? Give us search, a name. Searcher for uh, any type of data devices or anything and slide right. them over to me. Um, if you don't stim patch her, she passes out at this point. Um, Evan, cup of coffee, please. Yeah, I'll, I'll give a stim patch, yeah. I'll slam the stim patch in. Let's pocket most of the med kit supplies that we don't use, too, just in case. <laughs> I'm cool with that, yeah. You slap the, tin, uh, the stim patch on. Uh, her eyes get very wide. And uh, you see her take a couple of deep breaths, and then she's dead. <laughs> yeah. What the hell was it? I said, "Cup of coffee, please, man. We gotta work." What? Oh man! Did you did you apply to face? I mean, I probably would have actually right on their cheek. I probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> right well, st stem patches are um, are dangerous when someone is near death um, because of the sudden endorphin rush. She didn't get a single success. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's gruesome to watch that roll. <laughs> yeah. That's a shame. They, okay. Yeah, well, now I've sown uh, discord among EU as well, since they're going to find out she's half French. But I will I will go through her things and see if there's any anything else on her person that might. Well, um, other than uh, the deck that she had, she does have her, her PAN, her personal network. Okay. So basically, her cell phone. She has one. All right, I'll I'll take that and whatever you know, salvage the deck and maybe there's something. Sure. You know, just... <laughs> I have these pieces for you, Techno G. You like puzzles? <laughs> hey, I found a, a puzzle. I found a deck for you. Here you go. Well, oh, wait, here's part of it too. Nope, one more. Hey, oh. You said okay, the descent's going to take a few hours, so I'll take a few hours to to piece some stuff back together and see if I can get anything out of it. I have engineering and electronics. Okay. skills uh ivan uh i assume that you help strap the sky marshal down yeah but she tells you look I'm, I'm gonna pass out for a few hours uh when we land wake me up <laughs> will do i will make sure you are safe you saved my life i owe you a great deal you probably loot those bodies in the uh bathroom too <laughs> well right now you're kind of strapped too. down and unable to move as they're doing a quick plummeting <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. Now you you can work on your cyber deck because it just requires you to plug in, and that actually might be better for you <laughs> to be out of your body for the moment. Uh, or just her personal communicator. All right, so her personal communicator, her pan, uh, does have some serious firewall on it. So you're going to need to hack. Nice. As far as far as her deck, you're going to need to have some tools to get anything out of that. So for right now, that's just scooping the pieces into a bag. Probably yeah. use one of the vomit bags to just <laughs> scoop all the pieces into. All right, uh, hacking, and then I have uh, three re rolls, I believe. Find out what her firewall was on this. Two. Oh no! Wait. Hacking plus firewall. This is a matrix action, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. And then I'm trying to exploit. So the exploit is two rerolls, and the matrix action is another one if I need them. All right. I'm going to spend a plot point to have you roll a glitch die along with yours. So roll as normal and then roll an extra d6. Okay. Oh, we uh, lost Chuck. Or did he uh -oh. say he was. Uh, he just yeah, covered yeah. up. He'll be back. He, okay, he does yeah. it if he has to step away. Okay. Ooh, okay. That was, that was uh, now, now roll your glitch die. <laughs> Oh, and I get oh. to re-roll three anyway. Okay, so, so go ahead and re-roll the so three to see if two. we succeed. She got well. The system has five successes. Mm -mm, I can't. I can't. Can't do it. it. Okay, so I'm going to say with the uh, the exploit that you got though. So you're not able to get through her firewall. It's intense. Like this person was really good. Mm -hmm. um, the exploit is it was trying to put some very small low level programs into your own deck. Uh, you catch it and it was, uh, it was very sneaky. Um, oh. You, you would not normally have even thought about that uh, as to how it's worming its way into your, into your deck. You would never have noticed, but all right, the glitch guy helped you. In that you get me one of them. Well, uh, you've got, <laughs> you've got it here. <laughs> you can well, go I over get it. Me one of them. Wait yeah. a minute. <laughs> So yeah, you're not able to pull out any more information, at least not. It's like a worm, that. basically, eh? And very subtle at that. It's it's only like transferring, you know, like a few k trickling, you know, not Ooh, even it's a like full a program. Silverfish. <laughs> I hate those okay, things. Okay, so you you're going to need more time to work on this, and you're going to need tools to do anything with the deck. Meanwhile, uh, you guys are out of zero g. You're back into atmosphere, and this is where it's re they're going hot and heavy. So you guys are forced back into your ballistic chairs, um, and it, this is painful. Uh, this is this is beyond feeling a little tummy upset. This is like you can feel the skin on your face stretching back uh, as they're going down faster and faster. Several of the other passengers do actually black out. Uh, the kid has got like his mouth is open. You can see his jaws are like <laughs> like like air is like blubbering through his face, and he's just like, "This is great." <laughs> <laughs> I like this kid. I do too. This kid's fantastic. Uh, the Poly Club people, by the way, w they're terrified. You can see by like they they've like done things oh, in their pants. You were like flooding with them with all these videos of crashing planes the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> they're just terrified. Heady vengeance is the best. I'm telling you, it's my new thing. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, and so a few hours ahead of schedule. I want to lean forward and be like, if I, <laughs> I wish I could lean forward. I want to, I want to hack into their system. Uh, they just for a, a second, their entertainment system and be like, hi guys. <laughs> like, Ooh, I really love this crash from 1974. It's really graphic though. You're going to, you're going to love it. <laughs> Uh, so instead of it being uh, uh, late morning, it's early morning when you uh, arrive in Berlin. Uh, they already have uh, police are out on the tarmac surrounding the plane. They've got evac units out because a lot of people actually blacked out on this trip back and may have some more serious side effects from getting back so quickly. Um, but they don't know, you know, there could be a bomb on board. They have no idea. So it was worth the risk. Um, everyone is detained. Uh, as you're getting out uh, and they're, you're basically all going to be separated and questioned until the sky marshal comes out, shows them her badge and says, okay, these people helped. Uh, we don't know what, what, the, what was wrong. They were four, five, five uh, aggressors. We don't know what they were trying to do. If it was sabotage. So she's 
after a little bit of explaining and talking, uh, they ask where you're going to be staying, which you do have an address, by the way. Okay. They check your passports and then they let you go uh, because you did help. Cool. All right. Uh, so the next part is you're taking a uh, an old tiny train, an, an actual fuel burning train, uh, through you know, almost almost a day through scenic vistas. It's actually part of a a tour group which you guys have been scheduled to be with. Although there's going to be several hour layover now since you're here early. Um, but so the next leg of a trip is going to be on a, an actual steam engine train that goes through mountains and forests and is supposedly quite spectacular. You have your own private car uh, and they advertise five star chefs, Michelin rated chefs in their dining car. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> All right. Uh, you check baggage um, when you get all your stuff back. So yes, Ivan has his gun back now. Anything else you check tools wise is back. Um, of course, gun. anything illicit you didn't bring with you, you have to make contact. But the briefcase isn't here. You weren't actually sure if you were supposed to pick it up on this end or if it's going to be in the hotel. You're not sure where you're supposed to get a hold of it. You were just told that it would be provided at some point. All right. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, let's end it there. Then one, uh, one fabulous suborbital flight into berlin yeah that was safe great. and secure any plane you can walk away from on landing is a good one right right our, yeah. our travel insurance is really going to go up after this one mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean this is the first time gantu's ever flown so i i think he just assumes this is how it always is like this this is and that was a test on flights yeah uh, that was pretty sedate but usually they get a little rockier than that <laughs> gets rockier than this and I'm wiping blood off my face. Really? Yeah. Okay. The kid comes up and pulls your pant leg before uh, they're taken off to be interviewed. It's like, that's not ketchup. Just gives you a smile. <laughs> and, I, and I go ahead and I ruffle, I ruffle his hair and I just smother a bunch of blood in his hair. Like, no, nope, you're right. It's not. <laughs> you got a smart one there. <laughs> Be true to your heritage, kid. You'll love this one day. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, guys. We'll uh, we'll end it there. Uh, Chuck, for I the think night. you're muted, Chuck. I am very muted. That's why you couldn't oh, hear yeah. that. Did you, did you have something to say? There? Uh, yeah, Sorry. I would like to point out, um, as the authorities are getting us off the plane, I would like to point out the the racist pieces of shit. Be like they were in the associations with the terrorists Ooh. who attacked and caused the damage on the plane. You tell it to the Sky Marshal? I do. I tell it to the Sky Marshal and I tell oh, it to the police nice. when we get off the plane. Yeah. Petty Vengeance. That's Petty Vengeance. Team name. Yeah. Petty Vengeance. <laughs> right. uh, the Sky Marshal does actually give uh, sense over uh, or pans over her information because she may need to speak with you more later after they okay. find out what was going on. Uh, she doesn't give you the don't leave the country thing, though. Just like, you know, uh, I may need to ask you some questions. We can do it virtual. That's not a problem. Thank okay. you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so lead us out, Chuck. Uh, anything you want to plug? What else is going on? Anything? Uh, yeah. So Defenders of Cobalt. I am a horrible GM. Anything you want, go for oh, it. It <laughs> is always a pleasure, Bert. I love playing in your games. You're fantastic. Um, Defenders of Cobalt this week will be Wednesday playing some Spectaculars at 10 p.m. Central. Uh, this coming Friday, I'll be running some Mutant Year Zero over on Defenders of Cobalt. Um, and then Saturday over on Goodman Games Official, uh, we're going to be kicking off a new adventure that's not actually available for the public. It's got a long title. I don't remember it. It's Spheres of the Something or Other. Uh, Bert and Christopher will both be players in that. Uh, so it'll be a lot of fun. Thank you, Chuck. I would have forgotten that one too. <laughs> this is this is Bert's calendar show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is just catch Bert up. That's all it is. Yeah. yeah. yeah so that's what I got. Boy, is boy, it he... uh, is it the music of the spheres is chaos? Yes, that is a hundred percent it. That sounds awesome. We are debuting the music of the spheres is chaos. It is not up for sale chaos. yet, but uh, yeah, we'll be play testing premiering that showing that off live on goodman games official and, and no joke when was that again what, saturday what it'll be saturday. Saturday. saturday i'll send you the zoom link around eight all right eight central yeah 
Christopher. Look, I found an actual Shadowrun Berlin uh, skyline. Oh, look at that. That was look at pretty that. cool. Uh, I'm Christopher from Two Old Guys Games. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff on DriveThruRPG and 2OGGames.com and on the Goodman Games uh, official shop there. Uh, Wednesday, I believe I have my Mischief Golden Piracy on all the RPGs. And then Thursday is scheduled Swashbucklers. Um, we're doing a little retooling on it. I'm not 100% sure if we'll be playing on Goodman Games official this Thursday. Uh, but I am super happy that I came out of COVID death mode uh, to be in the game today because it made my week. Thanks, Bert. Yeah, and I'm, not, I'm not in any of those things that you just said. Okay. You're, you're not in those things. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff. Uh, yeah, Jeff, Adventures in Lolly Gagging this week, Monday, tomorrow on the uh, twitch.tv slash free league publishing at nine central we're continuing our vason game chuck and bert are in that game uh and then over on our home channel twitch.tv slash lollygaggers on friday we're playing those dark places uh that's at like seven central and then on saturday afternoon i want to say at five central we're playing some cobwebs uh so fun little game oh nice yeah, yeah. i liked that the last time you guys played it yeah it was fun I'm Bert. Uh, I run a little podcast called Of Steam, Steel, and Murder. Yes, there are new episodes out. Um, it's been a while, but they, they are there. They, they are, you could, yeah, they're things. Anyway, <laughs> nice seeing everybody. Thanks, Bert. <laughs> Thank you.